If you're a user of Sentinel-1 and you're not integrating it with Netbird, you are probably missing out. If you're a Sentinel-1 user and you don't know about Netbird, Netbird, in the simplest terms, is a open source zero trust network access platform that creates secure encrypted private networks for devices using the WireGuard protocol. Not only does it provide fast peer-to-peer -peer connections between devices, but it also has network routing features so you can access any devices on networks regardless of if you can install a agent on them or not. And all this connection can be granularly controlled with access policies. And then you can further improve that security with Sentinel-1 Singularity. We've recently released this integration and Singularity is a autonomous cybersecurity platform that provides comprehensive endpoint protection, detection, and response capabilities. The Sentinel-1 agent runs on your devices, collecting and analyzing endpoint data to detect and respond to threats in real time. The integration of NetBird and Sentinel-1 provides organizations with robust security controls that allow only IT-managed devices running Sentinel-1 to access the network. Additionally, the integration uses Sentinel-1's threat detection capabilities, enabling administrators to further limit network access based on the security posture of each device. Not only that, with NetBird's generic HTTP streaming capability, you are able to stream this network activity directly into Sentinel-1's Singularity Data Lake, which is a centralized repository for storing and analyzing security data across your organization. So without too much rambling, let's just get on into getting all this set up. It's incredibly easy. And there are two different pages of documentation that we'll go ahead and link to so you can see how to do this in a kind of written step-by-step -step guide with some further explanations on what these products are and how they can make your networks more secure. And to start, we're going to go ahead and grab our Sentinel-1 API token. And to do this, we're just going to go down over here to settings, head on up to users, and then go to service users. From there, under actions, we're going to create a new service user. We can give it a name such as Netbird Integration Test for this one. And then we can throw in the description such as API token for Netbird EDR integration. Then we set our expiration date. We could bump it up to three months. It looks like that's not recommended. So let's go one month just to stay in their recommendation range. So from there, let's go next. So for here, for the scope of access, we're gonna go site and we're gonna select this and then make sure that this is set to viewer. And then from there, we could go ahead and create our user. So type that in and hit confirm action. And then from there, we'll have our token right here. But I'm gonna keep this open. We're gonna head over to our Netbird dashboard. And then I'm gonna head down to integrations. And then under EDR, I'm gonna go to Sentinel-1 and turn this on. From here, it's gonna walk us through some of the same things we're going in this video or going through in this video. So let's hit get started. Here, we're gonna want our console URL. So let's grab that real fast. So from here over, I'm just gonna copy this, go back to our dashboard and paste it on in, continue from there. And now here is where we input that API key we just created. So let's grab it again, or the API token, give it a copy and drop it on in. From there, we can hit continue. And now we have our peer approval. This is the groups you want to apply the Sentinel-1 integration to. So for example, if I wanted all of the auditors and then maybe the development people to use this integration. So they have to be running Sentinel-1 on their machine to get access to the network. That is how I would set that up. And then I'd hit continue. Now here we have a variety of compliance uh, requirements that you could select. So any devices connecting to your network in that peer approval group will need to meet any of these that you select, ensuring that only healthy, properly configured devices can connect. For example, while it's not recommended, if I didn't require disk encryption for my specific company, network, whatever, I could disable that and then go continue. And if I hover over here, you have an example. So this property is set to 24 hours by default. For example, if Jane's laptop hasn't synced with Sentinel-1 in 27 hours, even though it's marked as compliant, it will be blocked from network access. So you could adjust that to whatever you would prefer, and then we could click on connect. And then just like that, it's setting up the integration, and now Sentinel-1 is successfully connected to NetBird. So now that that's set up, let's quickly talk about the data streaming, specifically the network activity from NetBird, to Sentinel-1's Singularity Data Lake. And to do this, we're gonna need another API token from the visibility section. So if I head over here and go to this first option here that says visibility, we're gonna open this up. And here you can see a number of events because I do already have this set up, but we're still gonna run through the process here. If I go over to my email address or my user right here, and I go over to API keys, 
And then under the log access keys, what we're gonna do is create a new write key. So click that. So now what we're gonna to do is get a HEC ingestion URL. And in our documentation, we do have more information on exactly how to do this, but essentially what you're going to want to do is paste in on a new tab, this address right here. And where it says your tenant, what we're gonna do is go back over to our main management console and then grab our tenant ID right there, which is in the subdomain field. So then we can replace your tenant here, just like that, and then hit enter. And then here we'll find our HTTP event collector base URL from the documentation page. Now from there, what we're gonna to want to do is go under integrations in Netbird, and this time we're gonna head over to event streaming. From there, we're gonna set up some generic HTTP. So let's go ahead and enable that, head back over to our documentation here, give this a copy and then drop the URL right here under the endpoint URL. But we're also going to want to add in from the Netbird documentation services collector and event. For the authentication, we're gonna select bearer token and then head back over to our API keys under singularity data lake, copy that API key once again, and then drop it right here under authentication. So from there, we can hit continue. For this, we won't have a header, but we will have a body template that we're going to want to pull in from the Netbird documentation here. You can see it right there. So let's go ahead and give that a copy, move this on out of the way, and then replace this body template that's in there by default, just like that. There we go. And now we could click on connect. So it has enabled that generic HTTP integration there. And then once all that's done, you can log into Data Lake and ensure that it's working by checking for incoming events. If it is working, you should see some test events coming in from Netbird as that was done on the initial connection. So again, there'll be links down below to additional documentation if you want to learn more and additional integrations if you happen to use something else. If you're a Sentinel-1 user and you're just getting yourself familiar with Netbird, I would recommend you check out our video going over our architecture and how everything works. It is a great resource. So that will be linked right here. With all that, have a beautiful day and we will see you next time.